I don't know what's going on. It keep looping. I keep uploading. It keep looping. I don't know what YouTube is doing today. I don't know if everybody took off work up there. YouTube.com. I don't know what's going on. It just keep looping. So I say, you know what? Let me get back in the studio for the third time and figure stuff out. But since, since I'm re-uploading the video, my settlement, my very first settlement of uh, 2020, my very first settlement of 2020, just came across my desk and... Uh, well, since I'm making y'all watch the video three times in a row, I might as well just toss this little extra clip in now. What do you think Andrew's deductions for 2020 is? Mm -hmm. I'm going put it on the screen so you can see for yourself. We're looking at about $80 a week. Yeah, $80 a week. That's right. We own the truck. $80. Let me get the calculator. $80. See right there? $80. Times we're gonna say um fifty two weeks. Fifty two weeks. Hmm. Four thousand one hundred and sixty dollars for the year. Wait a minute, Andrew. You mean to tell me your fits cost for the entire year? Four thousand one hundred and sixty dollars. Hmm. Shocking, Andrew. That. There's nowhere near what I what I got to pay for the year. You know, I got first of all <laughs> the lease drivers. <laughs> it's no fun if I don't say nothing about a lease driver, man. That's just the only way they can learn. It's the only way they can learn. Now the lease drivers, let me get the calculator. Do we already know what they are? They we just eight fifty. We're gonna start at eight fifty. Fifty two weeks. Okay, that's forty four thousand dollars. We're gonna give them a discount. We're gonna be fair. We're going to subtract 4200 okay? Mm -hmm. $40,000 for the year. That's just the truck note. Now, uh, uh, um, insurance. Now, from my understanding, they're paying about 400 a week. So, we're going to 400 a week times 52 weeks. That's $20,800. We're going we're gonna, to let's add that 40 in. $40,000. $60,800. Who's ready to lease a truck? All right, all right, all right. Today is Thursday. Coming to check on the truck. See if they uh, poured it into the bay yet or not. I have no idea. A lot of new trucks for sale. I know one thing's for sure. I can't go in the back to see if they did. Because it looks like it's gated off. It is gated off. Yeah, it is gated off. I wonder if I can go around the back. I didn't even know they sold uh, trailers and shit. What we gonna do? I can't go around to the back that way. I guess I'll go inside and ask. So if y'all wanna know when my work is being done, it's a handicap, is it? It's uh, Crows up here in Memphis, Tennessee. That's who's doing the work. I don't know if they started yet. They go in here and ask, see if they uh, found some problems or anything like that. Of if they even started, it looked like they did start because it's not in the um, it's not in the uh, inspection bay anymore. And it's uh, unless they parked it around back somewhere. But I'm finna go in this. All right, guys. So leaving the shop, had to go inside and be nosy, ask some questions. So I went inside. They had the oil pan drop, and they was uh, preparing to pull out the old parts and uh, install the new parts. They got everything prepped up. And I was just asking uh, the mechanic some questions. So, um, you know, he said when I dropped the truck off and I told him about the uh, check valve and the fact that, uh, you know, when the truck sit a long time, sometimes I got to prime the engine to uh, get it to crank up. Well, when, when I told him that, they thought it was uh, a bad injector. That's what they thought when I told them that. So uh, what happened 
I don't know if it's my go or his go. Okay, his go. My go now. So, uh, what they did was, you know, the truck been sitting over the holiday, and uh, he said they went out to it, and uh, it fired right up. So, because it fired right up, they know it's not an injected problem, like they thought it was, when at least when I told him that, because usually he said when the injector is bad, it's not going to crank right up, you know, because the fuel is going to go back into the uh, fuel tank. Uh, because he's sucking the air in or something like that. I forgot how he explained it, but obviously it's not an injector. So he said it's probably just some trash in the uh, check valve. They're going to take a look at it. But um, other than that, they ain't seen no problems. He said, like I said, the truck fired right up. And uh, it's been sitting long enough for them to know if it was an injector. You know, it's been sitting the whole day. They didn't have to prime the engine. Now, I did tell them. Cause well, I didn't tell them. They asked me. They said, "How do you get? How do you get your truck started? Do you use starting fluid or do you use? Uh, do you prime the engine?" And I told them I prime the engine. That's when I turned the truck in. They just, I guess, they asked everybody that question, but uh, they didn't have to prime it. They didn't use. They not gonna use no starting fluid unless you tell them that you use starting fluid to start the engine. That's why they asked. But um, that's the update. You know, uh, he said it could be done today, but I told him I check back Monday. Uh, I'm not in no rush. I mean, I, I live over here, and you know, when you own the truck, you know, I'm not in the hole. Well, I guess I am in the hole. I guess I'm in the hole insurance. I guess what is that, eighty dollars? Not worried about no eighty dollars whatsoever. But as far as the uh, top end rebuilt, not really concerned with the top end rebuilt uh, because we don't have any blow by. So you know, if it was uh, a lot of blow by, I'd be worried about the. Uh, the rings around the pistons and all that shit but i don't have any blow by i don't even know if this truck has been uh, rebuilt in the past before and i just don't know uh, I, I got the maintenance records for it but i didn't see anything about a rebuilt but uh maybe you know because this was an oil field truck and it's only been used in the oil field you know i don't know how often they changed the oil i know they i know they was using lucas uh, a lot because there was a whole lot of it, a whole lot of it at the bottom of the fuel tanks when I uh, when I got my truck, so they was definitely taking care of the injectors as far as cleaning. But um, not too much that I can really tell y'all right now. I mean, like I said, the oil pan has been dropped, and uh, if y'all want to know where I'm getting my service done, Crow's Truck Service. If y'all want to know who's paying the bill, you damn right, it's got to come out of my pocket. Well, who else you thought was paying the bill? <laughs> duh but uh as far as what the bill is it's gonna be a little bit more than uh i think i told you 2800 for the uh bottom end ros mains oil pump oil pan gasket and filters then yeah, 580 for the uh, overhead adjustment of course uh they gotta add uh they gotta add the check valve in and also i remember i had the cooling leak on top of the egr valve the uh i think it's the breather line or the vent line they're gonna uh, fix that also so um I don't know what they're gonna charge for the uh, check valve and uh, the uh, breather line. Shouldn't be too much, maybe about a two hour job. So I'm not really worried about that. A lot of businesses over here in uh, Memphis, man. A lot of work, a lot of businesses. We're just uh, shipping, man. A lot of shipping, a lot of Amazon, FedEx, and UPS going on over here. A lot of post office, but definitely a lot of Amazon. If y'all seen the Amazon plant, let me get a little bit closer. Show y'all the situation over here. That's right, gotta show you the situation going on over here with the Amazon. Here. Yeah, they got a little drop yard right here. That's right, I live. Oh shit, I gotta get right back over, huh? Gotta get right back over the lane ending. That's the little drop yard with all the trailers and stuff. If I ever wanted to pull for Amazon, I mean, I live right here by Amazon. Got my own truck, can do power only. It's nothing for me to uh, activate my authority. It ain't nothing but just a phone call to the insurance place. Wait 30 days for uh, the FMCSA to put me as active. That's all that right there is. Just a phone call. There's Amazon, man. Big ass warehouse. A lot of trailer action going on. I don't know if it's a lot of money going on. Well, it is for Amazon. I don't know about for the truck drivers, but uh, I need to go ring the doorbell and tell them I'm a broker too. So, you know what I'm saying? I need some freight. <laughs> Like that would ever work. I don't know what they got going on over there, but a whole lot of trail action over there too. Oh 
Ooh, goddamn lane just, just coming to an ear. Y'all see this coming to an ear without warning. <laughs> oh, a lot of freight, a lot of freight in Memphis, man. A lot of freight in Memphis. Do I want to get involved into a uh, drive in world around Memphis? Uh huh. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not with my truck now as far as the broker and the logistics side. Oh yeah, I get all into it. I'm at the house anyway, so why not get into it? I've been trying to get my girlfriend into it, but she ain't really hearing me. You know what I'm saying? She ain't hearing me, you know. I, ain't nothing I could do. I could tell you about the money, but you know, you don't want to get into it. You don't want to get into it. You know? I could tell people about, you know, what I lease a truck or buy a truck. I didn't get both. I just don't see myself, uh, even if my truck exploded today, I just don't see myself going to lease. I can just go back company, <laughs> go back company, or in oil field if, if that, and just save up buy another truck. Of course, I'm still gonna get to collect the insurance check anyway, so if they actually cut the check, you know, no insurance can be a scam nowadays. You know, I don't do the insurance. I don't, you know how I am with insurance and cars now, so don't, you know how I am. But whatever I can get out of paying, I ain't trying to pay. Don't think that I got it. <laughs> oh, man, I know, uh, I know uh, people out in the oil field, man. Since we're talking about insurance, man, I know people out in the oil field. What they would do is they would uh, get insurance for just a month. Go to Progressive, get the insurance. Wait 30 days for the FMCSA to go active. Lease on to a company under, you know, using the authority, get the 80 percent, and they just wouldn't pay the insurance bill at all. But they would still be running. And if they carry it the whole time they're in the oil field, so so now they not paying fifteen hundred dollars a month to progressive, but they still running the freight under their damn DOT number, you know. And uh, huh. you know, cause it's, it's it's no uh it's no DOT in the oil field, so it's not like you know. And now if they get in the crash, that's different. But uh, yeah, I'm just saying, I just I'm seeing a lot of people getting away with murder out here. They getting away with murder, and the cops is, you know. As long as nobody die get hurt, the cost is going right in their damn bank account. That's what the cost is. They get to go out and, you know, for risking for risking everybody's life, you know, their bank account is a little bit more full than it was yesterday. And, uh, you know, they can activate it at any time. Like I said, just pay their insurance. But, you know, I'm just saying, I haven't seen a lot of it. I haven't seen a lot of it. A lot of y'all gonna ask Andrew. We've been watching YouTube videos, and a lot of y'all were just completely behind, man. Y'all, every time I post an old ass oil field video, y'all think I'm in the oil field. Like, if y'all just did not see the video before that, I don't even want to explain. What's the point? I get it. I get it. Everybody don't watch my videos every day. I don't respect y'all too, but goddamn, I've been out the oil field for half a year. I ain't said nothing about going to the oil field. <laughs> Ain't never had a problem with the with the current situation I'm in now. I love the situation I'm in now. Look what the fuck I'm doing. Don't y'all want to be doing this right here? You know, because in the oil field, it wasn't none of this going on. In the oil field, you know what I'd be doing? I'd be at the truck stop looking stupid. With no work, of course. I'm talking about <laughs> talking about why it ain't no work. <laughs> Rather be doing this right here. You know, back to normal life, normal civilization. Uh-huh thinking about getting me a car uh, next month uh, for a Mustang not the newer models uh, 2015 man uh, I want uh, the 2015 EcoBoost I'm trying to get one for about 8000 to 10000 I'll uh, just pay cash for it either that or either I, I don't know I don't know if I'm going to get a second truck man you know See the because I need a car too, man. But really, I don't want to buy a car when I saw it's a whole fucking car in the driveway that just need like $300 worth of more work, you know. Like, what, what I said, ragged and peeing in the knee or something like that, whatever it is, you know, like $300 more work. But man, I don't, man, you know, you fist the cop and go to work, come back, and that's thing you know it's been sold. You're like, what the fuck, you know. Now, do I need a Ford Mustang EcoBoost? Hell to the no, I don't. Hell to the now, I don't need that at all. Matter of fact, there's one right there, the red one. Look at, don't they look clean? I seen, uh, what's that heavy haul, heavy haul TV got one? Don't they look clean? I'm just saying. 
But anyways, I can uh, get a car or I can uh, finish the rebuild process on my truck. So many options, so many options. And uh, I had some people asking Andrew, uh, man, where is all the money coming from? So I'm gonna tell y'all where the money coming from. The money comes from working a job over a extended period of time and saving money. It, it, all the money, I, y'all, I acted like I didn't hit the lotto last week or something. That's what a lot of people act like. A lot of people looking at me like, oh man, you doing all this work, man. Chemical must be booming. Have you seen my paychecks at Chemical? Didn't I post like 30 days worth of worth of uh, paychecks or uh, 60 days or some shit like that? Do y'all not know that all y'all probably make more than me every Friday? The only difference between me and y'all is, you know, because I own a truck, I get a steady check every single week like clockwork. Unless I'm just not working at all and I get to be home. But, you know, I'm not, this, this ain't no oil field, man. This ain't. This ain't the oil field. A lot of y'all dumping applications in. You're going to be disappointed because I don't even recommend chemicals for nobody that don't own a truck. You know, I see what the company drivers are making. I know the company drivers at our company. They're making the same thing as anybody else hauling regular freight. There's no difference. Now, they got, they got better home time from what I see, but it's no different than working at night transportation or Swift. I mean, the money is the same. The miles is the same. The only difference is bigger risk, which is why I don't, that's the only reason I don't recommend it, because the risk. It's like, why would I do this for the same thing as somebody working at Prime Meek? The only difference is that Prime Meek is not going, you know, you're not worrying about, okay, well, one day this thing could explode or I could roll over and, you know, you know, you ain't got that type of risk. I'm just rambling and rambling and rambling. Do I need to go in this Walmart over here? Or do I need to go get something to eat? <sighs> Turn these windshield wipers off. Anyways, I ain't gonna hold y'all up, man. I put out a video. Um, no, I don't work in the oil field. No, I don't plan on going back. And if I was to go back, I would need my own truck. Well, I got my own truck. I would need my own trailer and my own authority. And I already got companies that I would just lease straight on to. But uh, I wouldn't go back without a trailer, that's for sure. Whether it be a pneumatic trailer or, um, you know, you can get your own sandbox trailer, but I, I just don't see the value in it. Because, man, when the oil field, when it, when it do bad like this and you got a sandbox trailer, what are you, you going to do with that damn trailer? Being the fact that you can only haul sandbox with it. Now, the pneumatic trailer, you know, you can leave the oil field and still be hauling around here. You got a company called, uh, I think it's called Altima. They do pneumatic trailers. Uh, uh, Brady, Brady around here, They, I don't know where, they, where, where the terminal is at, but Brady through here with their pneumatic trailers. I don't know what they hauling, but I know they was in the oil field. So I'm just saying, they, they, they hauling something else other than sand, I know that. Brady about that money, and they're not probably about paying the driver's money, but the CEO, when I saw that letter he wrote, he about the money. I don't know about paying y'all the money, I'm just saying. <laughs> I read the letter, I'm just saying. Yeah, they don't haul for cheap. So whatever they hauling, it ain't cheap. But I ain't gonna hold y'all up, man. I'm heading all the way out to Mississippi, back to the house. I'm not gonna tell y'all I stay in Memphis, but you know, it's really Mississippi. Yep, but uh, oh man, y'all see the Mustang over there, yellow one? It's ugly as fuck. Y'all thought I liked it, didn't you? Y'all did, didn't you? 